Hi, I'm Dr. Parvati Raghavan with Dental Basics. Lichen planus is a disease of the skin. Histology is important for diagnosis and is based on biopsy tissue stained with hematoxylin and eosin and seen under a light microscope. Under the microscope, this is how a normal oral mucous membrane looks like and below its appearance in lichen planus. You can see that there are changes in both the images. When you take closer look at the epithelial cells, you can find that there are changes seen in all the layers of epithelium and also there are changes in the connective tissue. Three classical histological features of lichen planus are one, lymphocytic infiltration. There's a dense band-like infiltration of T cells at the interface between the epithelium and the connective tissue. Number two is liquefaction degeneration of the basal layer. It is seen as partial or complete disappearance of the basal cell layer. Number three is overlying hyperkeratinization in the form of hyperorthokeratosis or hyper parakeratosis and you can know more about this in my video on oral mucous membrane. The next layer below is the stratum granulosum. It shows irregular thickening and is said to cause formation of lace like white lines in the oral mucous membrane which are called as Wickham stripe. This is a clinical presentation of the oral lesion. Note that the white lines are present in an area of red inflamed mucosa. Lichen uh, planus is actually called lichen Ruber planus, where ruber is for red inflamed mucosa. The next layer is stratum spinosum. There is a benign overgrowth with intercellular edema or atrophy. Atrophy means decrease in cell size caused by loss of organelles, cytoplasm and proteins. This is called acanthosis. Acanthus means spine and osis means disease condition. Here the condition of the stratum spinosum could be either overgrowth or atrophy. The bottommost layer is the basal cell layer. It also shows atrophy. Atrophy of the epithelium leads to shortening of the radial edges and they appear pointed like saw teeth. This appearance is called as saw tooth rate pegs. Due to atrophy, there is also a breakdown of attachments between the basement membrane and basal cell layer, which weakens the epithelium connective tissue interface, causing tear during preparation of the tissue, leading to formation of empty spaces in the slide. So this is basically an artifactual tear and this is called as Max Joseph space. Situated mostly within or above the inflammatory cell infiltrate are rounded homogeneous eosinophilic masses. These are dead basal cells with DNA fragmentation converted to filamentous bodies by apoptosis and these are called the civet bodies. Some of the dead basal cells which cannot be phagocytosed are also present. These are the colloid bodies. In lichen planus, the number of necrotic keratinocytes may be so large that they are seen lying in clusters. These civet bodies and colloid bodies, when they are seen in the connective tissue, are termed as hyaline bodies. The Langerhan cells also increase in number in lichen planus. They are dendritic, that is, branched immune cells. Langerhans cells act as antigen presenting cells which process and present antigens for recognition to CD4 positive helper T lymphocytes. There is additional information below and you can pause and know more about it. This presentation is essential for the CD4 positive T cells to produce immune responses. T cells are like special forces. They are antigen specific and fight only one kind of specific invader and these are shown to them by the antigen presenting cells. CD4 positive cells are the helper T cells. They help the immune system recognize foreign substances. When the cytotoxic T cells, that is the CD8 positive cells, recognize the infected cells, they become activated and produce molecules that kill the infected cell. 
The suppressor T cells later make this killing stop by sending signals for inactivation of CD8 positive cells. In lichen planus, basal cells are marked as foreign bodies and cytotoxic T cells kill the marked cells by apoptosis. The cell pops to pieces. No, it doesn't. Actually, the nucleus of the cell shrinks, then the plasma membrane circles and folds around different organelles and forms fragments. These fragments are then cleared by macrophages, that is large eaters, or by neighboring cells. This clearing up avoids damaging consequences of cell necrosis and also allows the organic components of the dead cells to be recycled by the cells that ingest it. Now, I have been talking about all the CD4 positive and CD8 positive cells because in the epithelium and adjacent to the damaged basal keratinocytes, most of the T cells are CD4 positive and activated CD8 positive lymphocytes. These CD8 positive cells are responsible for the degeneration of the basal cells seen in lichen planus. Due to this, lichen planus is thought to be a T-cell mediated autoimmune process led by CD4 positive T-cells that activate the CD8 positive cells to target basal keratinocytes as foreign antigens and destroy them. All this infiltration of T-lymphocytes with CD4 positive cells and CD8 positive cells can all be seen by electron microscope and immunological studies. The presence of T lymphocytes indicates a cell mediated immune response. So, lichen planus is considered a CMIR of type 4, which is a delayed type of hypersensitivity reaction taking several days to develop. Clinically, also, lichen planus is a slowly developing disease. To help in further diagnosis, Immunofluorescence studies of biopsy specimen is done by direct immunofluorescence staining. It shows features in the microscope that cannot be seen by our regular h &E staining. We learned just now that some of the dead basal cells cannot be phagocytosed. These get coated with IgM and are seen as fluorescent globules with anti-IgM. Intense positive fluorescence in the form of a shaggy outline at the basement membrane zone with numerous irregular extensions into superficial lamina propria is also seen with antifibrinogen. This pattern is present in 1 LP and also LE that is lupus erythematosus. So clinical correlation is important for diagnosis. The same is seen at the dermoepidermal junction of cutaneous lesions. Another dendritic cell present in the epithelium is the melanocyte. Some loss of control over melanin pigmentation is seen in LP. Hyperpigmentation is seen in both cutaneous and old oral lesions. Note that for diagnosis of oral lesions, we need to rule out other causes of hyperpigmentation like smoking, Edison's disease, etc. The cause of hyperpigmentation of the mucosa following inflammation is thought to be due to increased melanin pigmentation, abnormal distribution of melanin, and presence of melanophages. There is a significant association between old age and hyperpigmentation. The main reason for this could be due to post-inflammatory changes along with repeated occurrence in healing of lichen planus spanning over a period of time. In skin lesions, severe itching leads to skin injury and inflammation, which induces post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Before finishing, let us do a quick summary of the histological features. Infiltration of the T-cells forming a band at the interface between epithelium and the connective tissue. Liquefaction degeneration of the basal layer. Hyperorthokeratosis or hyperparakeratosis. Thickening of the stratum granulosum. Acanthosis. Increased number of Langerhans cells, civet and colloid bodies, sawtooth rate apex. Another important feature to remember is that deeper tissue in lichen ruber planus is free of inflammation. 
I'll be back soon with the etiology, clinical features and treatment of lichen planus. So thank you for watching. Do leave a comment, give this video a thumbs up, share and if you enjoyed this video want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button. You can also click on any of these links given here to watch a video of your choice.